Hey, I'm coming to the end of uh, my uh, breathe book. I know it says breath. I always say breathe. Come on, it's not my language. I mess it up all the time. You know, the book by, by James Nestor. Oh, life-changing book. You know, come, when I say come to the end, you know, I'm at the last kind of thing. He's there someplace near the end there, you know. It's before chapter, whatever, I'm coming to the end. But look, I wanted to take t- t- just a little time because, uh, my second. Yeah, I'm also treating myself to non-dairy chocolate, uh, coconut ice cream, dairy, whatever. Got some um, chocolate syrup there. That's also like no GMO, all that stuff, you know. And then I got a little, chi- what is it, chia and um, something, other sea chocolate thing. Mmm. It's good. Treat myself to here. Yeah. But I was reading, you know, when I came across this part, I just want to read this book. I made a note even. You know, he gets, he gets into about the parasympathetic or whatever it is, nervous system and the sympathetic states, whatever it is. Let me just read this part. Sympa- um, sympathetic, I hope I'm saying it right. Sympathetic, can I read this thing right? Just a second, put my glasses, got on from the, you know, the VA sent me the glasses, I might as well use them, reading glasses. Oh yeah. Sympathetic states, Help ease pain and keep blood from draining out of uh, out if you get injured. Right, our bodies are built. I'm just skipping because I have to see. I have it highlighted. You know, I have, the book is all highlighted. All I mean, I can make a whole. I can make a whole highlighted book just from the highlights. I mean, a whole book from the highlights that I did this book. Anyway, um, our bodies are built to stay in a state of heightened sympathetic alert only for short bursts and only on occasion. Although sympathetic stress takes um, just a second to activate, turning it off, and here's important, and this is very important, returning to a state of relaxation and restoration can take an hour or more. Ooh, then I made, then then it it goes into this other thing about like, um, uh, uh, you know, how this is like a, like a high, like a euphoric kind of thing, you know. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, where's that get to that part? Um, uh, synthetic. Uh, it sends. Oh, it's it it's it sends. I'm skipping back now. It sends stimulating signals to our organs, telling them to get ready for action. When we take a short, hasty breath, the molecules of air switch on the sympathetic nerves. It works like a nine one one. So it's like it's like it's saying it's like an orgasm. I'm sorry. I put, well, it says there's someplace like that. But I put, because all the stuff that's happening, you know, with the, you know, the, the police you know, going, whatever, they, whatever they're doing, you know, I put my note. See, I wrote it in pencil there. It's in the margin. The margin. I wrote, police experience orgasm when killing blacks. That's what I said. It takes time to get over the thrill of the kill. Look, just a theory. I mean, you know, when you read a book, you know, you have your look. When you read a book, you have your own thoughts, and you, and according to whatever you were exposed to, so you sort of read stuff in there. And I've always been interested in, like, I always like. There's this whole thing where, uh, I mean, a long time ago, the science. I heard the science that that the whole fight, fight or flight thing. You know, then I was realizing that then you get these little bursts of adrenaline. You know, like if, if a dog, if a doggy comes and barks at you, you know, you. You know, like, like, you know, you, that, that thing, it takes a while to dissipate. That's what he's saying here, I guess. And um, so I was thinking, like, you know, black people go through that all the time. I mean, you know, every time a doggy, not a doggy, well, I shouldn't say it that way. You know, we hear the siren, or a police, a police situation, they automatically, iss, you know what I mean? And then you get to this whole thing where, you know, you get four or five cops and blah, 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 blah. And the funny thing, I never had that. I mean, I've been in other, I've been in Central America. I've been in Mexico. I've been surrounded by cats with really like milk, people with real guns. I mean, with rifles, right? They're questioning me because, you know, just because I'm me, you know. And I never get, I mean, I'm cool or whatever have you. And, you know, like I'm carrying my beer and balance, you know, and the thing or something like that. And they come, you know, what's that? Whatever it is. And, you know, it, it, they don't actually. They don't come threatening. That's kind of interesting. In other, I've been to other countries with military, and they're not actually threatening. I mean, they just you know they sort of talk. You know, it's it's, it's, it's I just don't understand. The, well, I guess I do understand the American, you know, mentality for, for all this. I mean, it's like uh, look, 
I hate to tell you this, but if you go to early documents, if they if they ever go through this HR forty whatever whatever they're doing with the Congress and they did the um what did they say to um to investigate you know for reparations or, or reparative justice, I'm starting to change this like like Antonio Moore would say to reparative justice. Okay, the less defined justice, then find reparative justice. That means they got to go through all of the early documents, how how the people were thinking back then. Then you realize this country, you are as you enter. This country is founded on principles of um, that was white supremacy, white nationalism, whatever it is, you know. And so they just it just keeps on going. It's, it's a thread that goes through. And when you jump on that white supremacist, racist, white supremacy, you know, systematic thing that this country started, and you jump on that that raft that that conveyance, it's hard to jump off. You know, very few people can do it. And even people, you say, well, you got to be, well, what about this person, this black person, or this, or this, I don't know, this this Latino person, or this Asian person, or this whatever person. They're, they're, they didn't grow up, no, but it's a system. If they jump on it, and they're in the right position, then they could take advantage of that system. So therefore, see, it's a system thing. You got to change the system. And here's the funny thing, because it's, and because if you jump on that system and it's economically viable for you, because, you know, you're keeping, you're keeping some people down, then you're not going to really give it up either for, for you know, restorative uh, justice for as economics or whatever have you. So you got to be, how do you say, forced to give it up, like debt do kind of thing. Anyway, I went off because I was, I was talking about the book here, but that's what I'm saying. These books, when you read, when you read, when you read something like this, I don't know about you, you guys that read the Kindles and stuff like that. Maybe if you even have it read so you get, get things done, but I don't know. Look, just, I'm just, I'm just happy to, not happy. I'm not actually happy I'm finishing the book. I, I'm, I actually tried to take this whole month. I got into what, the end of the month is Monday because my new book is in already. So yeah, I guess I have to finish it up by, by Monday. I've been going so slow. I've been enjoying it so much. Thank you, James Nestor. Thank you so very much. Y'all take care. You know.